Hey, thank you everybody for coming. Um, just introduce myself first of all. My name is Andrew Baisley. Uh, I work for a company called Cocaine Consultants. Um, I don't work uh, as a, uh, a new gold employee. Uh, we were hired by my company to assist New Gold in revising and updating their current closure plan, which will have to be updated for 2017. So the presentation today that I'd like to talk to you about um, is a lot to do with those changes that have changed from 2015 uh, to 2017, uh, referred to as amendments. Um, the reasons why uh, we're sitting here having the meeting as well as uh, some of the environmental and uh, protection that we'll be looking to do in closure moving forward. So closure, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, I deal with closure on a daily basis as part of my job, but what does closure look like, you know, for uh, everybody at this table looking forward? We're talking, you know, 2032 as uh, closure for the Rainy River Mine. That's a uh, you know, it's a long time away and it's hard to kind of think of these sorts of time scales, especially when we lay them out on pictures. Uh, so this is an example of a, a mine that had closed down. Um, these are some of the features here, these mine rock stockpiles, uh, a pit left here. And, you know, the mine in this example, they're not able to just walk away from this. this mines aren't like, uh, allowed to do this uh, anymore. They're bonded for that. And so what happened through meetings uh, like we're having here and uh, engineers and scientists and in this case the company as well being involved, hearing what everybody wanted, uh, we're able to come to a consensus of what their vision for their closure landscape uh, should be for this site. This is the same site uh, several years later after it's been reclaimed. So you can see that all of these waste rock storage facilities here had been reclaimed. Um, one of the primary end land uses uh, might not necessarily to apply uh, to Rainy River or uh, what this community wants, but uh, this community wanted a, a forestry uh, industry brought back. Uh, prior to the mine being here, there was largely forestry. So the mine agreed, uh, they remediated the land so it was suitable for forestry. Uh, one of the aspects that they wanted because forestry was going to be here was that the mine leave the roads in for access. So these are the little things that the communities can start thinking about, you know, what they like, what they don't like, uh, to try to integrate into this closure plan as we move along. Which mine is that? Uh, this is a mine in uh, Europe. Which community? Uh, it's uh, just outside Istanbul, Turkey. Istanbul? So, I like to ask myself too, you know, if I'm sitting listening to somebody talk, you know, what's the purpose of the meeting? Why are we sitting listening? Um, the reason for it is in 2012, uh, as part of New Gold's environmental assessment, uh, what they had to include was a conceptual closure plan. And that's basically to say that, you know, before the mine even starts digging, excavating, moving anything, we have to know how we're going to close it down and how we're going to close it down correctly. The problem is early on, you don't know a lot about the mine itself because you haven't got in, you haven't had a chance to see what's in the ground, how much dirt there is. So things are left purposefully vague to leave room for more detail to come later on. And that's 2012. In 2015, this document that was produced got bigger. New Gold began to do more studies, learn more information, and as such, they can start saying certain details of that closure plan have more information around them. So an example would be, New Gold would say, we're going to have a tailings management area, we're going to have an open pit, and we're going to have some stockpiles. That might be stated within this plan early on. But as New Gold starts exploring their pits, let's say in 2015, they understand, you know, our pit is going to be this large, it's going to be potentially this deep. Those details are added into this closure plan. 
There's still all this information moved into this, and then new information added. The reason why in 2015 this closure plan uh, was triggered was because there's a government and a regulatory reason that stated that as soon as the mine wanted to start developing that property, they had to do and revise and update their closure plan. So there was a there was a set regulatory requirement for them to do that. When you uh, when you say government, you're talking about provincial and federal. That's correct. What about the municipalities surrounding the area? So they, as part of this closure plan in 2015, uh, there were several meetings, uh, like the one we're having now, uh, that took place uh, within the communities uh, to elicit uh, feedback and comments as well. And so those are all included into that closure plan. And just like many of the comments, um, suggestions and concerns that we voiced here, as well as the other communities uh, we visited, uh, our company will came to make sure that they'll be included in the new 2017 closure plan. So is that including like people across the river, like in the USA site? Like the little towns like for that little areas. So to, like because I know the river is gonna slowly come go towards that area. Well, it is in that area but I'm just wondering what their concerns if they were. Yeah, it, so that's a, that's a good question. Once, like I say, uh, it'll work for New Gold. I don't know the, specifically the, the community uh, aspects of it. Uh, what our specialty is, is understanding the, the closure documents and the closure guidance. But for sure, that's a great question, and we can so look into that. So were you consulted also? Or I don't have the, the consultation mm -hmm. records. Where's the Mr. McGinnis?
<laughs> My question was, um, the federal and the provincial are involved in the closure um, plan, and if, uh, if some communities are not part of that closure plan, or the IBA and whatnot, I know Big Island's not there yet, right? Not quite. No. Yeah. Not so quite. a community like that, that's not part of this closure plan, so were they consulted also with the disclosure plan? Or, what, or are they going to be just falling behind and they have to just follow the steps? No, I think they would be well yeah. included. We all actually did a presentation there too. All so. the communities were involved, yes. It's not just ones with, um, with IDAs necessarily. So within the today, why we're sitting here now, is there's another closure plan coming. And it's not a new closure plan. 80% of it is similar to what was approved and proposed in 2015. But now, like we did in 2015, there's more knowledge available about the geology, the rock, the soils. And we're able to update that. So that closure plan gets more detailed and a lot larger. The triggers for these sorts of meetings are that, again, a regulatory requirement that Rainy River going into operations phase triggers that they must go back, look at this, revise it and update it, as well as if there was any amendments. <coughs> and amendments or changes from this plan to this plan have to be explicitly stated and notified of all the communities to make this record public. So the closure look, plan. Yeah, look at the amendments between the two. We're um, here today and uh, going to walk through each of those changes from the 2015 plan to the 2017 plan. So is there a website available for that, or for the uh, to see that are not here? So the the new amendments will be included in the closure plan which I believe is a public record, yeah, on Google's yeah. website. Pardon me? And if it's not, do we contact the... Contact the community. We'll apply it for you. So for those not familiar, uh, within the presentation, I'd like to just take the time to update everybody what the mine looks like in terms of what the components are on the site. Um, in terms of what the plant site is, this is where the ore is uh, dealt with, the tailings management area, an open pit area, the rock stockpiles, the different ponds that hold water on site, as well as the different creeks that meander through the site. Um, and with those, provide specific details so you understand what the changes are from 2015 to 2017. Um, again, done several of these sorts of meetings uh, and, and they're most productive when they're collaborative. I don't want to have a consultation meeting because consultation meetings are me coming in and saying, you know, I can paint your living room red, pink, or orange. That's not a very good choice at the end of the day and, you know, it's not, it's not good for everybody. So instead, uh, you know, there's just much information that needs to come back across the table uh, to us so we can make sure that the new closure plan uh, is as good as it can be. So for context, Rainy River Mine uh, is located here at the Star. Whitefish Bay, where we currently are, is located up here. Uh, Lake of the Woods over here to the west. Highway 11 running east-west and Highway 71 running north-south. As the crow flies from Rainy River Mine to get to the closest point of Lake of the Woods is 40 kilometers or 25 miles. And if you were a fish in Rainy River, at the closest point to the mine, it would take you 61 and a half kilometers to try to get to the Rainy River Mine. Uh, and then if we were to fly there, Right now, it's 65 kilometers from where we are here today. I forgot the other area of Whitefish Bay is right near Lake of the Woods area, and it's about 40 kilometers away, and then there's uh, not going so 
Okay, so there's another area like labeled? Yeah. Okay. So what kilometers away is that going to be?
So all the water within the tailings pond uh, is recirculated. So to reduce the amount of water uh, that the site needs to pull from the outside environment, they're it's trying to recycle as much of that water back into the meat, into the, the feed uh, for the mill. So it's a, a constant loop. The second area is, again, for an additional 12 months of capacity for tailings, was construction of this wall right here, this dam wall. And what that did was basically segregate another area off called cell two. And this is to provide Rainy River more time to construct the final wall or dam wall around the tailings facility. So with time, as the tailings are deposited, these are small you know, walls initially, uh, the tailings will fill up in those, and then once these other walls are constructed to the larger facility, uh, they'll basically be buried. So at the final land, you can see it in the, the images, uh, these walls will, won't be visible from the air. We'll just be able to see the footprint of the, the larger sized tailings management area. The next area, um, the next major change or amendment to the closure plan is the West Mine Rock Stockpile. So this is the West Mine Rock Stockpile here, this yellowy square. And this hosts rock. This is the, the byproduct of the ore uh, extraction process. Uh, what's shown here is there's a rock stockpile and then there's an overburden stockpile. An overburden is all the material, the clays, hills, the sands, the silt, this sits on top of the local bedrock. So this would be if you went outside there and you dug down, that's that type of material. So one thing that was great, that those could be segregated, you can see that there's not a lot of space uh, in this area, especially next to the pit. So this is the maximum size that that facility can be there. So one of the problems, as we said, you know, we go along and we learn more and more about the site as we start to excavate, is that this overburden material, clay, probably could have asked anybody here, Rainy River didn't understand how much of that clay overburden there was going to be on top of where the, pit, the now pit is located. So they ended up with a lot more of this clay overburden material than was expected. The problem with clay overburden is that for it to be safe, you can't stack it up very high. Um, if you stack a mud pie up, it'll only go so high before it you know, moves away. Sounds really simple now, right? So well, what do we do now? We, we can't build this pile up very high, but we have lots of rock here. Well, the solution is to make the pile safe, to mix the rock and the clay together as one into a combined stockpile, which is here. What do you do with the rock piles? Do you rock piles in the rock piles? I just wanted to make a map. I don't know if you love money, so. So, for sure. There's two things there for the, the rock piles and the clay piles. Yep. What so, are they stockpiled for? Um, well, Great question. So when uh, material comes out of the pit, um, there's a lot of rock sitting on top of the gold deposit, right? Um, and that rock needs to be put somewhere so that they can get down into the gold deposit. So it's usually blasted away and then removed from the pit and it has to be put somewhere, right? It has to be stored and piled up. So that's what a lot of this rock material is. And it's the same way when they're trying to get down to this rock to start with. They have to remove a lot of overburden, which is the clay material. And you know, just like uh, gardening, if you get a, a pile of topsoil dropped off, you have to store it somewhere because this material can potentially be used, especially if it's topsoil, for reclamation at the end of the day. So it's important to save these materials. So if um, the reclamation part, who has access to all that stuff? Uh, is that for the people who have signed on, or is that? Or maybe to sell to No, it can't. Uh, 
any material, yeah, great question, that's stockpiled um, needs to support the reclamation of the mine. So New Gold doesn't make any money on it. So they have to spend money to dig it up and save it and put it in piles because along the way what we're going to do with that material is use it to close down the mine. So to replant and revegetate. So it's a, yeah, like a large recycling program essentially. Um, the other yeah, change? I don't know, like with that stockpile, if you leave it in there for so many years, how many years does it stay here from 2030? Right? I'm just guessing. Yep. <laughs> 2030, and if you have that stockpile there, like, doesn't, it, especially when it comes to contact with whatever kind of rain, as rain, regular rain, how does that affect that stockpile if you're going to be putting it back later on? So this stockpile won't be put back. This stockpile will stay. What it'll look like is, you can see in the, the very last image there, is a, uh, is a hill, essentially, is what it will look like at the end of the day when uh, the soil goes back on top of it and then the vegetation grows. So it'll become part of a, a landscape unit itself. So within this West Mine Rock stockpile here, uh, some rock that uh, the mine will be pulling out is known as potentially acid generating rock. Uh, and what this is, for those of you who are not familiar with it, it's a lot like uh, your rusty bumper on your car. If some rocks have minerals in them, that when it's left out in the atmosphere, uh, they oxidize or they rust. Um, and I actually have two examples of it. Pass those around. You can see one of the rocks has what looks like rust on it, and one of the rocks does not. And uh, this is an important concept because this process happens naturally in the environment. Uh, some rocks rust and produce acid, which goes to the environment. Um, acid's not something that's uh, completely man-made in the environment. You know, pine trees do the same thing with their needles to the soils. Um, but what we need to do with this potentially acid-generating rock is it needs to be stored in somewhere that oxygen can't get to it. So it's the same thing when you have uh, a rusty bumper, you need to remove that corrosion or paint over top of it to prevent further corrosion or oxidation. So, uh, I got one question. Yeah. You mentioned about the uh, the closure is not bomb. How is it right now with that with that PAG rock? With the peg rock? Yeah. It's yeah, it's stable. There's no acid release off site. Oh no, uh, is there so is there when, what year was that? Uh it was in the nineteen eighties. And we have some more, I have some more examples to show of sites that are be more relevant to Rainy River uh, that are in Ontario as well. The next change or amendment will be uh, the underground mine portion and what we showed in the previous closure plan was that we stated that there's going to be an underground mine. So, didn't know how deep that was going to be, or how big the shafts were going to be, and where it would go underground. But now, with again more information that we know today, we can change that closure plan for 2017 to give specific details on how deep that portal will go, how large those shafts will be located, etc. So those details will be in the new 2017 plan. Over here capacities added to that stockpile, so that stockpile would be larger than what was proposed in 2015, just due to the amount of rock that came out of the pit that was unexpected. So with the agreements with Rikers Creek, so with this new stockpile that East, what did you call it? Right? East Mine Rock Stockpile. Oh, yeah, the underground portion is there an agreement? 
Is there going to be like job creation for the council that on the ground? So it'll be a, a continued phase, so once they're done mining in the pit, uh, they'll be moving to mining underground. So I don't know what the, the job schedule or the careers are, but um, potentially there's a lot of jobs that will move from the pit uh, to the underground phase at that time. So is it in the agreement saying that? I don't, know where I, don't, I don't know what's in the agreement, but but the jobs actually, like the development of the underground is going to be, you know, contract miners to drive the tunnel down, it'll be a big spiral, yes. and and that, I don't know if there's opportunities in, in that work, because that's specialized work, Yeah. So. Uh, but then once they go underground and then they, they have another piece of equipment that, that drills the shafts. So I think then once the mining starts, there will be opportunities like people will, for training there. Yeah, yeah. But underground work is very specialized work, and you know training will be required, just like driving the truck in the open pit. Yeah. So, but I, I don't know specifically to this agreement if the underground has training or what's involved there. That's all. But we can take that question, when Allison comes back, we'll make sure that that question is answered. Yeah. It's a good question. The seventh change is uh, largely centered around new information that we now know, uh, specifically new technology. So an emulsion plant, emulsion is the uh, explosive that's used in the blasting of the open pit or in underground mines. Um, an emulsion is created at a plant and generally transported to the pit where it's then put in the hole and blasted. Uh, recently though there's been technology that's made blasting uh, much safer in that what we can do is we can create two products, product A and product B, that can be driven separately to the blast holes and mixed in the blast holes. So it's a lot like a, a two-part epoxy now system. So the materials are actually stored separately uh, within a facility. So prior to this, when they were in the same facility, there's obviously a larger danger. That facility has to be located further away from people and danger in the surroundings. So it was located up here. With this new technology, and it's now in two parts, that storage facility, where those part A and part B can be stored, can be much more centrally located to the mine now. So where's these explosive? When you say transported, like from where? So and through where? So they would be located over here, up here in the mine property. Okay, so how do you get the explosive to go there? It's driven in a truck. From where? From the storage plant here. Oh no, I think she means. <laughs> yeah. So we buy. There's there's several products, yeah. and and so we buy. I mean, suppliers, suppliers bring it uh, down the East Mine Access Road and bring it directly to the truck. I, I can't tell you if it comes through the Kenora Way or if it comes through Thunder Bay Way. But um, it's brought to the site and it's stored there. And then the emulsion, you know, like emulsion is oil and that stuff mixed or whatever, it's to keep it in suspension and to keep water away. That. That doesn't occur until it's right at the hole at the mine. So the two products, the truck will go, fill up, there are two tanks, drive to the holes, and then they pump it down the hole and it's mixing as it goes down. So it, it's uh, way safer. Yeah. So in other words, it's not volatile when it's not transported. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and that, so that's the big improvement. Cause, yeah. And that's why the emulsion plant no longer exists because we're not making it anymore. It's actually made right in the pit. Yeah. So exactly. It's that's safe for everybody. Yeah. Well, exactly. That's yeah. uh that's the back of the What's the code number? The dangerous code? Yeah. Well, I can get the number. I don't know what it is. I don't remember what it is. Yeah. But the T D G code? Yeah. Yeah, it's got one. Now the only reason why I'm saying it's uh, not volatile is from my experience as a gunner in the RCA. And the quarter bags were separated from the uh, the shell itself okay. for transportation, mm -hmm. and it came in separate bundles. The shell was over here, 
And the chloride bag was over there inside that. And it was the shell that had your detonator in it? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, exactly. Yeah, the reason why I was asking is, I don't know, like, I know it's a dangerous good, right? And for, for them to be going through First Nations, the ones that are on the highway, Oh, oh. Being consulted with that? I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, no, the in, the individual components, yeah. Yeah. like the one, the the part that's explosive, it's fertilizer. Okay. Like ammonium nitrate is fertilizer, okay. Okay. and so it's it's yeah, the transported the two, all two over. Two parts the on their own are, are safe. Yeah, there's. Yeah. It's only when they're combined in the hole that they're dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. So ammonium nitrate's no any fertilizer. And then the other product would be kind of like Jello, you know, yeah. diesel and Jello. That's why, yeah. That's why I came up with my experience to answer that question. Oh, okay, because, um, thanks. Yeah. So, so that's why. Yeah. So in 2018, uh, this is uh, an artist rendering. These are the same images that uh, we'll be leaving here for everybody to look at, and those that uh, couldn't attend the meeting, so they understand as well. So these are the same facilities as the, on the map. This is the tailings management area located here. Uh, the starter cell that we talked about for the first six months is located right here. Uh, this water pond is just river water, so there's no tailings in this pond. This is the West Line Rock Stockpile. As you can see here, it's just starting to be built. Uh, it's not very high just yet. This is the pit. Uh, they've started excavating and blasting into the pit. And then this is the start of the East Mine Rock Stockpile over here. Uh, right now, there's no underground workings uh, put in in this image. Do you have an actual aerial picture of this? Yeah, we've taken uh, aerial imagery yeah. every year. So we've got, well, we've got one from 2008. 2012, so before we started, and then 2016, 2017. So every year we'll have a new one, so people can see the change. And that, and that was a that was a, a question that was raised by a lot of communities, and good feedback that we got. Um, so when we're revising the closure plan, uh, actually John has helped me find lots of overview pictures, so real pictures of what this tailings management area looks like as of 2017 what these stockpiles look like. So those would be included in the plan so people have a, a reference yeah. for that too. Be because it's a closure plan and it's so far in the future, it's kind of, yeah, that, that's why these schematics are used as, you know, to... So, it's hard to be thinking already, 2022. This is about halfway through the open pit operations, so this will be about halfway done. What we can see is now there's more rock added into the West Mine Rock stockpile as it gets a little taller. Uh, you see that original starter cell that was located in the tailings management area it is now filled up and tailings are covered over top of it. It's contained now within this larger uh, dam wall. This is closer towards the maximum height of 20 25 meters. Uh, the pit is also getting deeper at this point as well as the East Mine Rock stockpile is uh, continuing to be built up. So 2025 represents a, a significant phase uh, for a lot of reasons. One, um, this is the time when mining in the pit uh, ceases, there's no more mining there, and mining is now transferred to the underground portal, which we show in the amendments. A more exciting, I guess, uh, for me anyways, uh, aspect of this image is this is the same period of time when we start looking to do some progressive reclamation. Uh, and progressive reclamation, for me, uh, is great because what we're doing is we're starting to reclaim the site before it closes. So we're not waiting till the end of the day to start closing down the mine. We start closing down the mine as it's operating. So what this looks like is these cover systems, as we'll talk about a little bit later, being built up to sections of these stockpiles that are no longer in use. So they start to green up and revegetate. Is the plan on those? So do you guys get the results too from the geologist as, to, as it starts to vegetate? Is there is that a report to be available for members to see? 
So there will be different studies, like we're investigating studies right now. Before we even build some of these structures, uh, the types of vegetation that will be most successful to grow on these areas. Um, and a lot of the learnings that we've taken from the 2015 closure plan in terms of revegetation plans and successes are carried over and enhanced in the 2017 plan, which will be available. But the geology studies, which ones are you sort of referring to? Just, like this ancestry of the, the source of vegetation, like for instance, yeah. the, uh, the mine you were talking about in Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's part of uh, a monitoring phase um, where monitoring for these progressive type uh, reclamation projects would start as soon as they're planted. Um, so obviously you want to gauge the success of the vegetation to make sure it's growing right. So there's all sorts of different studies that you know, vegetation experts and biologists can come in and do, uh, you know, whether it's measuring trees once a year or twice a year, um, how much grass or forage there is for deer, um, all sorts of those studies can be conducted uh, in a monitoring period throughout the mine's life and into closure. So you do studies like if I plant a thousand seedlings, how many survive the first two years? Yeah. So then you, you come back and you say, oh, okay, there's 800. And so then what do I need to do different? So And all of that goes into the annual report. So as we start doing work, that will go into it. And it's public. It's on the web. So everybody can look at it. Uh, but that would be the kind of study that would be captured for revegetation. So there's this is the end of operation in 2030. Um, there's kind of two important concepts here uh, that we're going to talk about uh, in the slides coming. And that is how you deal with the tailings in the tailings management area, and how do we deal with these stockpiles in time and once the mine's closed. And we do those with a technology called cover systems. Um, in one case, for the tailings, it'll be a water cover that's placed. And for the stockpiles, it'll be constructed or a dry cover system. And I'll explain what those are. Yes? Will there be environmental monitoring end of mine operations in 2030? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and so uh, environmental monitoring occurred you know, from the start mm -hmm. of mining, yep. um, and it'll be a requirement through through into closure as well. So, so we budget for a hundred years. Oh, okay. So there's a hundred years of budget of monitoring in our closure plan, and so as things achieve their targets, so we say we will reclaim and we we will have 15 whippoorwill pairs. So when we get 15 whippoorwill pairs, well then we, we stop monitoring, but there'll be water quality monitoring, vegetative monitoring, all kinds of monitoring. So as it achieves its target, like the fish communities and benthic communities in the rivers and streams, like the reclaimed ones, we already know um, what the target is. The, you know, so when before we started mining, we had say 15 different minnow species, and of those 15, there was 5% of these ones, 2% of that, 10% of that. That's our target. We've got to get back to that. So as soon as we achieve that, then we know it's healthy. And, and we're doing that right now. So like some of our, 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 our monitoring ponds, um, we've already got success on that. So, but, but there's money in the budget to monitor for 100 years. Yeah. So, the key to all of these cover systems and the purpose of what they're doing, you remember back to these rocks that I passed around, is what we're trying to do is prevent the bumper from rusting is the, the key requirement. So the tailings will oxidize too if it's exposed to the air, um, as will some of the rock, not all of rock, not all types of rock. For instance, your, your granite countertop uh, will oxidize or rust. It's only a particular type, so those are separated. Also, like to explain how the pit lake will return um, eventually. So this is a really crude cross section uh, that I used to explain how pit recharge or how the pit will be turned into a lake on the closure. 